All right, we're going to start in Psalm chapter number 29. I'm going to do this entire psalm with you. Luckily, it's not that long, but uh, Psalm chapter number 29 and verse number 1 says, Give to the Lord, you heavenly beings, give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord glory of His name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. But the question is why? Why can we give the Lord glory and strength and worship Him and praise Him for all of these things? Well, he goes on to explain, and he says, The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord sounds with strength. The voice of the Lord is majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, and the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them skip like a calf, and Lebanon and Syria and like a wild ox. You say, what is he talking about with all of this voice of the Lord and thundering and Skipping like a calf is kind of interesting, kind of odd. But he's talking about a storm. He's talking about the power that is in a storm and the thunder when it thunders. And we just had a storm here a couple a couple nights ago, I think. And uh, it, was, it was pretty crazy. We had some hail and some trees fall down and things like that. And he's talking about that. And he says, when you see the, the strong oaks and the mighty trees bending and swaying, you're starting to see... The power of God. He said, The voice of the Lord flashes like flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer to give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits as king forever. Why does he tell us about that? Why does he tell us about the power of God and, and about how the storms uh, work and, and how he's over all of creation and remind us about how he takes care of his calves and how he takes care of the deer and, and they birth and all of this, these things? Why does he spend so much time telling us about that? To remind us that God is in control, that God is in control of all things. That he created everything by speaking. Just the sound of his voice created everything that we see. And that he is still in control of everything that he has created. He's been in control ever since. In fact, he was in control during the Roman persecution. When they were persecuting Christians and people were being murdered and killed. He was in control during the Dark Ages. He was in control during the Black Plague. He was in control during the Great Depression. He was in control during World War I and World War II, and he is still in control in 2020. God is still on the throne, but we must look to him. Psalm chapter number 61, I want to read that with you. Psalm chapter number 61 says, Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry unto you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. This psalm is a psalm of David, and David was a great man, he was a mighty man, he was a king, he was a warrior, and yet he said there was times in his life where he would cry out to God. There was times in his life where he would get overwhelmed, even the great king. The Bible calls David a man after God's own heart, a man that, that loved God and that God loved him, and yet still there were times in David's life that he was overwhelmed. In fact, if you look at the wording here, he says, from the end of the earth I will cry unto you when my heart is overwhelmed. I've always thought that wording in Scripture is very important. I've always liked grammar and, and thought that it's important, the words that we say. And I don't think God puts things in the Scripture that don't mean something. He doesn't say, if my heart is ever overwhelmed. But He says, when my heart is overwhelmed. Meaning that He expects that there are going to be things in His life that are too much for Him. There are going to be things in His life that are overwhelming, that He cannot handle Himself. And he says, when that happens, when these times come, by the way, there's no shame in that. There's no shame in being overwhelmed sometimes. There's no shame in, in, in being stressed and, and, and filled with, with these things that overwhelm us. The problem is what we do with that. He says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That rock is Jesus Christ. See, Jesus Christ is the rock. Jesus Christ is the one who is strong enough, is powerful enough. We're about to celebrate Easter here very soon. And it's a reminder that Jesus Christ conquered death and the grave. He conquered sin. And he rose again from that because of the strength and power that he has over the entire world. And he says, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. When David is overwhelmed, when he's struggling, he goes to God. He goes to the Lord. What do we do when we're overwhelmed with anxiety and stress and fear? Praise the Lord that we have one who is stronger than us, that we don't have to do it on our own. We have one that we can look to. 
I always like to give an example that uh, maybe we can connect with a little bit more. And I, I think about uh, my own kids. I have four daughters and now a son, brand new son, which is exciting to me. But uh, I have one daughter, Emily is her name, and she, uh, she struggled with dogs for a while. She was afraid of dogs, very afraid. I mean, when I say afraid, I mean she was very afraid of dogs. And uh, we went over to my in-law's house and they had a, uh, a dog, and it was about a medium-sized dog, but very, very spunky and rambunctious. And he came running out to her whenever we got out of the van, and she was scared to death. I mean, if you look at a little child and you see that, that fear in her face, she was scared to death when she turned around and looked. And she came running to me and she climbed up me like a tree. She just climbed right up me and I was trying to get her off me, you know, what's going on? And I was trying to sit her down and I was trying to show her, hey, Daddy's still in control. Don't worry about it. This dog's not going to hurt you. I'm here. I'm in control. And she wasn't having any, any of it. So I, I peeled her off of me and I put her down in the van with the dog outside running around. And I just started to explain to her, look, Daddy is in control. Do you, does Daddy love you? Yes. Is Daddy going to let you let this dog hurt you or kill you? No. Is Daddy in control of this dog? Can he take care of this situation? Yes. And so we just started going through all of those things. I was just reminding her that her dad was there and that he was still in control. And then I set her down outside and I said, I want you to pet this dog. And she was really hesitant at first, but we got through it and she was able to pet the dog and able to, to realize that he was, she was going to be okay. And it just reminds me that we need to always be looking at our father. When our father gets worried, then it's time to panic. When, if I was worried, if I was panicked in that situation, it would have been reason for her to panic, but I was still in control because I was her father. But our Heavenly Father is never worried. He's never panicked. Through whatever we go through in this life, through whatever this, this world throws at us, He's never panicked. And trusting in Him brings strength and peace. That leads us to our last verse in Psalm chapter number 29, and we'll finish up the whole psalm. The last verse says this, all of these things bring a reminder of who God is, and then verse number 11 says, the Lord will give strength to His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. He, he gives us all of this background of who God is, and the power that He has, and what He has done, and, and the fact that He is still in control of, of all the things of this world, and then He closes with, the Lord will give strength to His people, and the Lord will bless His people with peace. God is still in control. And He is able to give us strength. And He is able to give us peace because of the power that He has. Just like my daughter, though, we have to look to Him. We have to look to Him like the rock that David talked about that's higher than us, that's stronger than us, that's in control of everything, and say, I can't, I, I'm out of control, I, I, I'm worried, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. But I'm going to trust in the rock that's higher than me. I'm going to trust that my Father still has everything under control. And I'm going to leave it in His hands. The Lord will give strength to His people and bless His people with peace. I pray today that the Lord will bless you with peace. As we close in a word of prayer, Father, we thank You for this morning again. We thank You for just the fact that we can slow down and put our faith and trust in You. That we can realize that even when we're overwhelmed, even when things are out of our control, we don't know what the future brings that we can trust in the power that you have and the fact that you are still in control of all things. And so we leave this in your hands, for it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.